T.H. Culhane for Envisage Mercy, the Environmental Science, Environmental Sustainability and Justice Club at Mercy College, New York. We are always doing hands-on activities here and bringing in new toys to play with. Right now, we're looking at the handheld fuel cell power supply, which has these cartridges, which are the equivalent of 12 AA batteries and are rechargeable, but unlike batteries, because it's not a chemical reaction, uh, it doesn't go bad. It's just filling this matrix of metal inside here, which is probably a nickel-based material with hydrogen ions and then using the hydrogen. So it's not even a hydrogen tank. It's not like it's stuffing or compressing hydrogen under high pressure in here. It's putting the hydrogen in and it, it, he it, it adheres on a molecular level um, to the metal matrix inside, which makes it fairly safe. And this here is the recharging station because uh, when you uh, de depleted the hydrogen and you're no longer using this, then you fill this thing with water and uh, distilled water. It's got to be distilled water, which goes in this chamber here up to this level and then slowly breaks it down and dissociates it through electrolysis into hydrogen and oxygen and then releases the hydrogen, uh, releases the oxygen to the air. Now, this cartridge uh, came uh, as it does when they, when they arrive from the vendor. It comes already filled with hydrogen. So when I screw it into the actual device, like so, you begin to see a red light blink and you hear a, a puffing sound as water vapor is expelled from it. And so it's charging up the fuel cell that's in here. That's the fuel cell which breathes air. And the hydrogen combines with the oxygen in the air that goes through this breathing area here. And then that uh, creates an electric current. So you can kind of see, I don't want to break it all the way open, but the fuel cell is on this side of it with the electronics. And this is where the water vapor comes out. Now, when it turns blue like this, it's ready. And then you can use it uh, for a flashlight or you can take this out and it's got a USB so you can charge your cell phone. And with one cartridge full, you can charge the cell phone, uh, smartphone, two or three times fully before you need to recharge the cartridge. So when you're done with it, you can take the cartridge out. And you'll notice that when I remove it, the light stays on. That's because there's still hydrogen going through the fuel cell inside here. And until all of that hydrogen has been turned back into water vapor uh, by breathing air, that's the point where the light goes out. So now it's depleted. And this, of course, eventually needs to be recharged. And that's very simple. This is blinking, blinking green here. You've got the water in there. You screw this in like so. And it turns red. And the red tells us that this is now charging. And it'll turn green again once it's charged. If you look up here, you will see bubbles begin to come up as it uses up the water and starts transforming it into hydrogen and oxygen. So you can see some activity down in that screen area down in here. Oh dear. Yeah, and here as well. So you see, actually see the activity going on. So that's where the, um, where the water is being dissociated and the hydrogen is coming out. You see activity going on here as well. And so this water level is going to drop as the hydrogen is consumed and then oxygen is probably coming out of here. So it's a really safe, quiet way to make electricity, to, to make hydrogen. You don't have to use electricity from the wall. The unit is built so that you can use a solar panel or a wind generator and plug that in the back here if you have a 12 volt uh, power supply. And that can be supplied by a bicycle generator too, for example, like you saw at the science barge in Yonkers. As long as you have a source of electricity, photovoltaic, wind power, bicycle power, you can turn the hydrogen, uh, turn the water into hydrogen and oxygen. So that's a really cool device that we have. And I'll never have to buy batteries again with this. This costs about between four and five hundred dollars for the recharging unit. And then when you buy this 
this costs uh, about 150, I think it was, and then each cartridge is something like 25 or 30 dollars. But a real savings in terms of batteries if you look at it over a several year period. The other piece of equipment that we have, the new toy, is we have this solar oven. It's a hybrid solar oven. That's why it's indoors right now. This morning we had sunshine for about an hour, an hour and a half, and we got the pumpkin muffins, these great gluten-free, sugar-free pumpkin muffins uh, to be halfway cooked. Now, because uh, the sun went behind a bunch of clouds here in New York, we put it onto the house electricity. That's the great thing about having a hybrid solar oven. It did have, it has these reflectors. When you're outside, these go here and here to help bounce the sunlight in. Of course, when we're indoors, we don't need to use any reflectors, and we could, of course, even shut this. The way that this works, this has this sliding thing here, so you can uh, find the right angle to put the sunlight in. And you don't do it, by the way, by going like this. That won't work. Or like this, you keep it straight, and then you tighten it down. For these ovens, that's very important. We thought for a while that we had a problem because we tried to angle it like this, and you can never tighten this screw tight enough, and then the cover always falls. So then we learned that if you just keep this straight, then the amount of uh, the amount of torque when you twist this is enough to hold it in place, and then you adjust it to whatever you want to do. And then it has this stand here when you open it. You see mm -hmm. steam coming out. Ouch. And uh, a lot of water vapor. The great thing about solar ovens is, is that because they keep the water vapor in, you never risk burning your cookies or your muffins or your breads. That one's almost done. So, uh, but you do let out the heat from time to time. You let the steam out and then go back down. So these are nice, uh, nice renewable energy tools because they work on either house current or using solar or wind or mechanical motion energy. And that's what we try to do here in Envisage. We're all about disaster preparedness. We're all about crisis management and sustainability. We want to make sure that people have options. And having hybrid materials gives people those options. It's not about rejecting one form of energy or one lifestyle in favor of another. It's a both and rather than an either or philosophy. Thanks a lot.